Good morning, and welcome to our Mass from the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We pray that you and your loved ones are in good health. Please check our parish website for updates and for links to devotions and other information, as well as how to continue to financially support the parish as we journey through this virus pandemic. Thank you for your continued support. Our presider today is Father Critch, and our entrance chant is number 595, Christians, let us love one another, number 595. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Today I'll offer up this Mass for the repose of the soul of Dr. Bob Wally, very well-known Newfoundlander, who spent most of his life as head of Care International, and who worked to bring healing and peace, and especially in Africa, working to help uh, build maternity hospitals for women in Africa and poor countries. So we pray to God, to him and for him today and for his family. And to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries today, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts, to forgive us for the times we have failed to be merciful and forgiving and compassionate to others. We ask the Lord's forgiveness. God of mercy on us, forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart, 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, sent messengers again to Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall you speak to King Hezekiah of Judah. Do not let your God, on whom you rely, deceive you by promising that Jerusalem will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. See, you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands, destroying them utterly. Shall you be delivered? Hezekiah received the letter from the hands of the messengers and read it. Then Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord, the God of Israel, who are enthroned above the cherubim, you are God, you alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Hear the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to mock the living God. Truly, O Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste the nations and their lands, and have hurled their gods into the fire. Though there were no gods but the work of human hands, wood and stone, and so they were destroyed. So now, O Lord our God, save us, I pray you, from his hand, so that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you, O Lord, are God all one. Then Isaiah, son of Amoz, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I have heard your prayer to me about King Sennacherib of Assyria. This is the word that the Lord has spoken concerning him. She despises you. She scorns you, virgin daughter Zion. She tosses her head behind your back, daughter Jerusalem. For from Jerusalem a remnant shall go out, and from Mount Zion a band of survivors. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, He shall not come into this city, shoot an arrow there, come before it with a shield, or cast up a siege ramp against it. By the way that he came, by the same he shall return. He shall not come into this city, says the Lord. For I will defend this city to save it, for my own sake, and for the sake of my servant David. That very night the angel of the Lord set out and struck down 185,000 in the camp of the Assyrians. When morning dawned, they were all dead bodies. Then King Sennacherib of Assyria left, went home, and lived at Nineveh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is number 34 in your Catholic Book of Worship, number 3-4.
The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not give what is holy to dogs, and do not throw your pearls before swine, or they will trample them underfoot and turn and maul you. And everything do to others as you would have them do to you, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction, and there are many who take it. For the gate is narrow, and the road is hard that leads to life, and there are few who find it. The Gospel of the Lord. In the first reading, despite being attacked by a more powerful nation in our reading from the second book of Kings, Hezekiah prays to the Lord for deliverance for his people, and as a result of his trust and hope in God, is delivered safely. The Assyrians, who had overrun the northern kingdom, were now attacking the southern kingdom, and only one city remained free, Jerusalem. So the Lord protected Jerusalem. And in the Gospel reading, Jesus reduces all of the Jewish law and the prophets to a very short maxim, I guess you would call it, always treat others as you would like them to treat you. It is often termed the golden rule, and there are versions of this commandment among Greeks, Romans, Jews, and in the sacred writings of many faith traditions. And Jesus invites us to imagine how we would like people to treat us, to ask ourselves the question, what do I really want from another person? Most of us would answer that question along similar lines. We want from others respect, tolerance, loyalty, understanding, compassion, and justice. Every other person you know is worthy of our respect and consideration. We cannot treat other people as if they were less important or less worthy than ourselves. We must see others as brothers and sisters, as fellow human beings, and companions who share our same dignity. And the way we treat them must flow from that realization. In these threatening times for our world, where we see racism and injustice, we need to find the common ground that allows people of different faith perspectives, languages, traditions, races, maybe people of no faith either, to work together in the service of humanity and of our planet. As well as challenging the culture with the values of the gospel, we also need to build bridges as well. The next verse in the gospel reading tells us to enter by the narrow gate, it implies that following this rule of treating others as we would want them to treat us will not always be easy. Narrow gates require an effort to get through. There are narrow gates in the walls around Jerusalem, very narrow gates. You cannot bring a lot of stuff with you to go through them. You have to leave your baggage behind. And maybe Jesus was thinking about that when he talked about the narrow gates. Entering through the narrow gate requires a clear focus and a certain concentration of effort. We have to leave all of our sinfulness behind us. And we can do that in the sacrament of reconciliation. The narrow gate Jesus speaks about leads to what he calls a hard road the road to eternal life, and it requires a daily dying to oneself, putting the good of the other before our own good. Yet Jesus declares that it is the only way that leads to eternal life, a sharing in the Lord's own risen life. And Jesus is also suggesting that this way, if we go there, this difficult way, will run counter to the way taken by the great majority, as he says. The call of the gospel will often be experienced as countercultural. For that reason, it will require a conscious decision, a choice on our part. That choice is always a response to a call, the Lord's call, but it remains still a human choice. We may have been baptized into this way of the Lord as infants, but as we go through life, we have to choose this way for ourselves. Every day we have to choose to go through the narrow gate to take the Lord's way. Although the gate is narrow and the way may be difficult, Jesus assures us that his way is the way that leads to new life. He will walk beside us and lead us to the narrow gate and through it. The way to the narrow gate not only leads to life beyond this earthly life, but it leads to life here and now. Our prayers of intercession today, we pray to our Heavenly Father that we trust that he will answer all the prayers in our hearts today 
We pray for Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop Bishop Peter, and all those who lead and guide our church through these difficult times. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our world community that all leaders and citizens may speak out against all forms of hatred, racism, discrimination, intolerance, and abuse in our homes, communities, and nations. We pray to the Lord. For the poor, the unemployed, and the isolated and alone, and all those experiencing distress as a result of the virus pandemic, that they may experience the love and compassion of others, we pray to the Lord. For the sick recommended to our prayers, and we are asked to pray for Frank Ryan today in this Mass, and we pray for all those who provide compassionate care for them, we pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, especially we pray today for Dr. Bob Wally, that all the dead may rest in the loving arms of Jesus the Good Shepherd, we pray to the Lord. And we pray now for your own intentions at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the graces and blessings you give us every day. We make our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept your sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all God's holy church. Let us pray. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in Him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in His fullness. For though He was in the form of God, He emptied Himself, and by the blood of His cross brought peace to all creation. And therefore He has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey Him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with all the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are claimed. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the heart. Oh! 
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, if we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. We pray with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the world that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We share the peace of Christ now with one another.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn, number 6.6, .6, and you celebrate in song, One Love Released, number 6.6. One bread, one body, one cup, one call, one faith, one spirit, present in Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help in eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray to Mary now for help and protection during the pandemic. O Mary, Mary you, you always, always shine on our path as a sign, sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust, we entrust ourselves, ourselves to you, help of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide so that as in Cana of Galilee we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father, to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sores to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Under your protection we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God, do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin Mary. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Amen. Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go now in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Have a good day. Our missioning hymn, number 439 in your Catholic Book of Worship, The Master Came to Bring Good News, number 439. Thank you. 